Welcome to Suitcase Coder, the podcast. My name is Laura, and I'm the host of this podcast where I track my journey from joining a coding bootcamp to becoming a freelance web developer. My ultimate goal in life is to travel the world and see as many countries as possible as a remote developer, that is, to become a digital nomad. But until then, I'll keep working hard, learning as much as possible, while sharing everything I learn along the way with this podcast, which I hope help and inspires future techies, freelancers, and digital nomads. Thanks for listening, and let's get started. Much like yourself, I have been on strict orders to socially distance myself from the rest of the world due to COVID-19. During this lockdown, I have been going on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and all of these social media platforms just to socialize with people worldwide. Thank you, internet. But during this time, I have come up with a theory that most people are going through what I call motivation highs and laziness lows. During my motivation highs, I find myself going on hour-long walks, trying to learn French, building websites, baking cookies, and doing as much as I possibly can because I think to myself, I'm going to take advantage of this time and learn and do as much as I possibly can with all of this quote unquote extra time that we have sitting on our hands. Now the laziness lows are the complete opposite of my motivation highs where I spend my time learning TikTok dances, FaceTiming my best friend, and scrolling through endless amounts of cute animal videos. But this podcast is to be listened to or at least applied while you're feeling motivated as I try to uncover the minimal amount of tools that you need to learn to code. Many of you may be taking this motivation high as an opportunity to learn a new skill such as learning to code, which I believe is a brilliant beyond brilliant idea. So without further ado, here are the top tools that I think you need to learn to code. So the first tool is commitment. If you want to learn to code and you actually want to make a career out of it, you're going to have to spend some time learning how to code. And the only way to get through that is if you set some time from the beginning, set a goal and commit to that goal. That is dedicate some time or a couple hours a week to learning to code. And like I said, we're all in lockdown right now. It's kind of that perfect opportunity to take that extra time if you have any and really learning how to code. Again, I will provide a lot of awesome resources to get started in the show notes or in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. The second tool is kind of obvious. You're going to need a working computer. Now, I'm definitely not saying go out and buy yourself the fanciest, newest, most expensive laptop on the line. That is not what I'm saying at all. As long as you have a computer that works and is capable of downloading any software that you may need in order to learn to code, then you should be fine. Now down the line, if you become the world's greatest software engineer and you wanna treat yourself to a nice fancy computer that can do a whole bunch more, has a lot more space, then by all means, treat yourself. But for now, just start with what you've got. I personally use the MacBook Pro that was, I believe, nine or 10 years old, and it was very close to failing, but it still got me through the boot camp that I attended, which was perfect, and I didn't need anything else. What I will say is just make sure you have enough space on your computer, like I said, to download anything that you may need to download, or if you want to have enough space to store any of the projects that you work on. If not, you could also look into external hard drives to help you with storage on your computer. Number two is pretty obvious, but without it, you really can't learn to code unless you really just want to learn about the theory around coding, which I mean is great, but if you want to learn how to code, you're going to need a computer. Now that we're talking about computers and making sure you have enough space to download anything you may need, you're going to want to get tool number three, which is download an IDE or have a text editor that you use when you're learning to code. Now there's a ton of different options. There's in-browser IDEs like rebel.it or the ones that Free Code Camp has within its own website, or there's ones that you can download like Visual Studio Code or Atom.io, and either one of those is fine. I actually think that the in-browser ones, like the one that Free Code Camp uses, might be a little bit better for beginners just because you can see what's happening side by side without having to worry about any of the other unnecessary things. So if you don't already have one in mind, then I'll leave some of those in the description that you can get started with. And I think as you go along, everybody has their preferred IDE, and I think think you too will benefit from having one and knowing how to work with it as you're learning to code. On to 
tool number four, which is something so simple, but believe you me that it comes in handy way more than you ever imagined. Number four is headphones. I'm not saying go out and buy the most expensive noise canceling headphones that exist on this planet because that's just not necessary. As long as you have a set of headphones, I still use the headphones that came with my phone. And if you look back to just a couple of videos ago, those are the exact headphones that I used to record this very podcast as well as my early YouTube videos. Whether your headphones are noise canceling or not, plugging your headphones in and turning on some kind of study station on Spotify, I think helps get you in the flow of working and just kind of puts you in that mindset of, okay, I'm going to sit down and learn to code for a couple of hours. It's also a very visual way to say, do not disturb me. I am learning to code and you're going to use them a whole bunch when you're learning to code and you start interacting with other people online or watching YouTube tutorial videos, which I highly recommend doing when you're starting off. There's so much greatness out there on YouTube that can help you learn to code. So yeah, get yourself a pair of headphones. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just plug in, learn to code, and maybe use it as a tool for you to get into the mood of learning to code. So tool number five, I think is super important, which is find yourself a dedicated workspace. You may not have a whole office to yourself. You may not even have a desk, but find yourself an area in your house where you can sit down and study at the same place every day. It also helps you not only get yourself into study mode, but out of study mode, because when you're learning a new skill, sometimes you get so excited that you can spend hours on hours on hours hours on trying new things and sometimes it's very important to physically step away from your work, take a break, clear your headspace, and go back to it once you're ready to learn again. Again, this dedicated workspace doesn't necessarily have to be at home. That's just the current situation for everybody, I believe. Like I myself really prefer going to cafes or co-working spaces where I can get a lot done knowing that there's people around me in the same work mode than I am. So maybe try that out if working from home isn't working for you, of course, once all of these lockdown restrictions have been lifted. Tool number six, which I have found extremely helpful through my learning journey, as well as something that I still use every single day as a developer is a scratch notebook. Now, the one that I'm currently using, I got, or actually my sister got for me from the dollar store in Guatemala. And today I actually use the very last page of the notebook, which I'm not sure if everybody gets excited about, but it really does excite me. So the reason why I think a scratch notebook is or at least scratch paper it doesn't have to be paper it can be online if you prefer that is because it allows you to take everything that's bogging your mind down when you're learning and put it on paper and go back to it and it just helps clear your mind and visualize what it is you're learning as well as visualize what you're getting stuck on what you're trying to accomplish with a new task and as you grow as a developer you're going to want to start building wireframes and I think just taking it to pen and paper first is super helpful so find yourself a scratch paper and of course you can use paper, digital, whatever you prefer. And this kind of leads me to my last and final tool that I use, which is another notebook. And this notebook is actually my bullet journal, but it is the notebook that I going to call a goals notebook to write down your goals for learning to code, to write down your daily goals in how you're going to learn to code, whether that creating a new app or just learning the vocabulary surrounding a new language, whatever it may be having a notebook to help you track those goals I think is really helpful in having an intention for every day as well as long term and also, it's really helpful in going back and seeing how much you've actually grown as a developer because sometimes you're feeling stuck and you can think that you haven't learned anything, but in reality, when you look back at all of the goals that you've accomplished, it can be really satisfying and motivating for you to keep going. So highly, highly, highly recommend a goals notebook. And if you haven't watched or heard my episode on knowing your why, then I also highly recommend listening to that as it gives you a little bit of purpose in accomplishing your goals. Now that is it for the top seven tools that I think you need to learn to code. Action item for this week is to download your very first IDE, whether it's Visual Studio Code, Adam.io, or any other one. Download it and try to play with it. Even if you don't code anything, just familiarize yourself with an IDE because you're going to be using it more and more and more. Best of luck on your coding journey. And of course, don't forget to have fun. Thanks for listening. And if you've enjoyed it, please don't forget to rate my podcast on Apple Podcasts. And if you would like to watch the video recordings of this episode, I post that on my YouTube channel on Wednesdays, where I also post tutorials, these live recordings, as well as my personal experience with the coding bootcamp that I attended. And if you want to reach out, feel free to do so on Twitter or Instagram at Suitcase Coder as well. Thanks for listening and until next week. Ciao. Oh, hey, you're still there.
Cool. Did you want some extra bonus tools that I think aren't necessary, but you might find helpful in learning to code? Well, in that case, find yourself a timer and look into the Pomodoro effect. That way you can set timers as you're learning to code to keep up with your goals. Find yourself a proper desk. Again, this isn't a necessity, but learning to code on your desk versus on your bed can make a huge difference. If you can, find a webcam or use the one on your computer just because as you learn to code, you might build a community and you might be able to join webinars or other free resources for learning to code that may require video chats. If you do learn to code and want to start applying as a software developer, many interviews are held online and require a webcam. And last but not least, find yourself an accountability partner. They may or may not be learning to code as well. Just have somebody that will push you and motivate you to keep up with your goals of learning to code, especially during this time when our lazy lows can totally take over our entire days. Again, good luck and thanks for listening. Until next time. Bye.